22 things new UX designers should be familiar with. Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Alexia and I am a app developer and UX UI enthusiast. In this series of videos, I'm talking about UX and UI, the importance of it, and I'm trying to put out all the best knowledge that I have. I hope that you like this series and if you are ready, let's sit down and start this video. Whether you've graduated from a short course or a degree, when you first enter the workplace, you learn 100 times more than you'd ever imagine. Sure, you learn more techniques and practices, but the soft skills you'll pick up are just as valuable. You'll learn more about yourself, others, and how to deal with certain situations. Let's start with designing and ways of working. So the first thing here is don't be afraid to say yes. Don't let the fear of the unknown deter you from taking on something new. If the chance to work on a new project comes up, jump on this opportunity. Even if you don't know much about it or it seems too complex, taking on challenges, we allow ourselves to learn new things and grow as developers and designers. Secondly, don't jump into using design tools straight away. Always take a step back and do the necessary research before you're even touching wireframes. I know this is obvious, but it's often forgotten. So the discovery phase will make your life a lot easier when you start defining and designing. Thirdly, get feedback often and as early as you can. Don't sit on screens for too long without straining your teammates or users. Another person's feedback may push your design in a completely different direction. Never get attached. Uh, you might like your design, but the design isn't for you. Fourthly, when going into a critique, be prepared. Regardless if it's a casual or formal critique, a person has made time and especially if he's busy to sit down with you. Take this time and appreciate it. Learn as much as you can. 5. Don't be afraid to say no. You might be given an impossible deadline or a workload that will be too much. It's okay to speak up and voice your concerns. Saying no is far more respectable than saying yes when you actually cannot do something. 6. Something will always come up last minute. Think on your feet and be adaptable. At some point, you will need to drop everything you are working on. You may need to redesign something or uh, get a different piece of work out that wasn't planned. While we take steps to avoid this, it's always a possibility. 7. Don't be afraid to put your foot down if something critical is being overlooked or written off. Sometimes things can be overlooked by accident or even on purpose, so it's in the best interest to stay above things even after they are signed off. If you see something that you know isn't tried, speak up and make it known. I've stopped things completely happened before because I made noise about it. If I hadn't, it would have slipped through and make a huge negative impact. 8. Work with developers early to discover all edge cases. Doing this will save you a lot of headaches later down the track. Get the developers involved during the design phase. They'll be able to inform you about what every edge case could be. It could also bring up possible limitations and opportunities. Design solutions for this before a handover occurs. 9. Think and plan first, then prototype for testing. Before building anything, take a moment to think about what you want to get out of the testing session. If you're lucky enough to have a UX researcher on your team, chat to them about what the best method may be and try out the user journey with them. Following a plan will make your life easier and save you a lot of time. 10. 
skate holders might try to give you the solution rather than the problem they want to solve. A project should always begin with a problem or a goal, not a solution. If a skate holder tells you what the future they want, push back and find out why they want it. Use research and quantitative data to find the best solution for the problem. If you can prove it and show evidence, skate holders will change their mind and get on board. Now about team and culture, here are my tips. Choose your team, not just the company's name. I can't stress enough how important the people you work with are. People often fall into the trap of choosing a company based on its name, looking good or their resume. Soon they realize that the process and culture isn't that great, so they fall behind. Surrounding yourselves with good people who care about design as much as you do will help you learn, grow and become a better designer. 12. There is nothing wrong with asking for help, but try to solve it for yourself first. Don't suffer in silence if the answer is a quick question away. But before you ask, take a moment to think about the answer. Can you solve this on your own by quick search? People will appreciate that you've attempted to solve your own problem first. 13. Find a person that you feel comfortable asking that stupid questions. In my team, we have a there is no such thing as a stupid question policy. This is another reason why my team is so important to me. There are some questions I definitely wouldn't ask in front of a skate holder. However, I'll ask my teammates later on in private. Working with others. Now, this is another chapter. Tip 15. There will always be that one weirdo in your workplace. Weirdos will always be weirdos, but look on the bright side. You will discover how to interact with them and handle situations involving different types of people. All experiences, both positive and negative, will add to your personal development. Just remember the line and don't let them get away with it if they cross it. 16. If a developer or a major skate holder asks a question about a design that you're unsure of, avoid saying I don't know. It's better to say I'll get back to you on that or let me confirm with this my colleague. This is especially important if you are new. I don't know may bring about a lack of confidence in within your team or in a larger environment. If you can, deflect the question, figure it out and then get back to them with the right answer rather than the wrong one. 17. Always explore a skate holder's feedback even if you don't think it will work. Never shut down a skate holder's idea in a meeting. Just write it down in your meeting notes and say something like, um, Okay, I will check that in a bit, that's interesting, I'll give you feedback in a bit, or, you know, something along these lines. It's really not ideal to mock it up and to prove to them why it doesn't work, otherwise they will keep nagging you for it. 18. You can't always win. Pick your battles. There will be cases when a skate holder will make a final call on what the design will be, while you might not agree with that decision. Sometimes you need to, comprom to compromise. If this happens, make it clear that you don't recommend the move, but ultimately this is their call. Working with users and businesses is just part of your job. 19. Ask a few developers the same questions that you would ask in that designers. There's been cases where I'll get a different response each time. One person might say it can be done, while the other says it can. In this case, you need to dive deeper, figure out if it's a time issue, technical issue, or it sounds too hard, so I'll just say no issue. Unfortunately, it can happen. In reality, anything is possible. It just comes down to time and money. And now let's go to a learning and skills theme. Tip number 20 is plan an hour of power for yourself to focus on something other than work. 
No, I'm not implying that you should sit on Facebook instead of working. The hour of power is a time that you've allotted yourself to work on something that will improve your skills. For example, you could study something you are interested in on Coursera, try out a new prototyping tool, do some tutorials to sharpen up your skills knock out some concept designs or do some research into design trends and UI. This will allow you to stay engaged and mix up your day. Tip 21. Learn about how the backhand code works. As you work with developers, you will naturally pick up how the backhand system works. Although it's best to take initiative and learn more about it so you can communicate better with them, I would recommend writing down any words that you've overheard and don't understand, then Google them or ask someone afterwards, thus forming a many glossy of words as you go. 22. Make presenting easier for yourself by being prepared. As a UX designer, you need to be able to effectively communicate your designs. I found this easier to do when I'm prepared and have a plan. Jot down what the key points you want to say are, the order in which you will be starting the work and what key takeaways you are looking to get out of the meeting. Consciously think about what you're saying and what you're going to say next. Take it slow, relax and be clear. So that were my 22 tips. Down in the description below I will also leave some very helpful uh, tips or techniques. That was it the video for today. I hope that you liked it, I hope that you enjoyed it and if you did then please don't forget to like, share this video with your friends and also subscribe to my YouTube channel.